So recently I've been working on putting together the next language giveaway that I'm going to be doing right here on this channel. And while I was putting it together, it got me thinking about Swedish. So let me paint the picture for you guys. I was hanging out with some Swedish friends one Friday evening, playing games as you do. I've been here for two and a half years now. So for the majority of the time, when I'm hanging out with Swedish people, I talk in Swedish because I have a kind of good grip on the language now. I can communicate, they can understand me. Sure, I make mistakes, but we get by. But because I'm still learning the language, my vocabulary has some gaps in it. And occasionally, of course, we reach a word in the conversation that I just can't translate. And I have to ask one of my friends, what was that you just said? What does that mean? And sometimes when they try and translate those words back for me, we realize just how literal the Swedish language is. And it was at that moment, I just knew this video had to happen. It was too good an opportunity to miss. I could not pass up on the opportunity. So today we're gonna to be talking about some of the words in Swedish that when you try and work out how they put them together, you can't help but laugh. And of course, as you guys know by now, I love Sweden, I love the language. So this is only intended as a bit of fun, but I couldn't help myself. We had to dig into some of these words and work out where the hell they've come from. And then I realized that I've got the best source of inspiration out there, you guys, of course. So I hopped over onto my Instagram account and I said, guys, you need to tell me what are some of the words and phrases that when you translate them from Swedish to English, they get absolutely lost in translation. And today I've picked out some of the very best of those suggestions. I'm gonna be sharing them with you right here in this video. I hope you're ready. This video is about to get out of hand. And what better place to kick off this video today than my first word, which is of course, cock. Okay, who snuck that one in there? I said we weren't gonna be going for the cheap shots in this video. I'm sorry guys. Where we're really gonna be starting today is the word grönsak, which translates literally in English to green thing. And for those of you out there that don't know, grönsak is the Swedish word for vegetable. So green thing is of course a very literal translation. I mean, it works, I can't really deny them that. But at the same time, I mean, kids already hate vegetables enough. So by calling it a green thing, do you not make the situation just 10 times worse? And I mean, I can't fault them because it is exactly what it says on the tin. But that said, you have to agree with me that the word thing is probably the least descriptive word in the dictionary. I mean, would it not have been more appropriate to use the word green food? At least I would have told you that you're supposed to eat this stuff. The second word that earns its place in this video today is damsugur, which literally means dust sucker. And I'm sure that there's lots of you out there right now who are conjuring up all sorts of weird and wonderful ideas of what a dust sucker could possibly do and how it belongs in your day-to-day -day life. So let me put you out of your misery and explain that a damsugur is literally the Swedish word for a hoover. Fun fact, it's also the name for a sweet treat fika out here in Sweden. So we're gonna make that differentiation nice and clear now before you get invited to a party and asked to provide the damsugur fika and you turn up with your vacuum cleaner. And again, they've got a point, you know, it does suck the dust. That is the purpose of your vacuum cleaner. But I love that it doesn't tell you what happens to the dust once it's finished sucking it. Like where does that dust go? At least in the English word, you know it's been cleaned away. In Sweden, you're just continuously sucking dust and hoping for the best. And again, there's only so much fun I can poke in this one because sure, it's a little bit funny when you first hear the word, but you can see where they got it from. It's super literal, but it makes sense. And that's just the thing actually, because here in Sweden, they will tell you that the difference between English and Swedish is that Swedish is super literal and at least they get to the point. And they'll tell you that Swedish just doesn't beat around the bush. It's exactly what it says on the tin and if you break down the words into their constituent parts you can see the golden thread. You can see where they got to the conclusion they did. It might be literal but it makes sense. And before you get too smug let me just stop you in your tracks because I beg to differ. Listen to the next little words I got coming your way. The first of which is studsmatter which means Bouncy castle. Ah, oh, Greg, if you'd only checked Google Translate before filming, you'd have realized your crucial slip up before it was too late. Because let me tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, studsmatta is the Swedish word for trampoline and not bouncy castle. But we are where we are, so grab your snaps, everyone, and prepare to do a shot every time I screw this up. But if you break down that into its constituent parts, the word you've just read out is bounce carpet. Geez, they've really stripped the fun out of this one. I mean, can you imagine any other country in the world where a kid asks for a carpet for their birthday? I mean, the only situation where a bounce carpet sounds like a lot of fun is where I've been watching way too much Aladdin and got way too involved in the storyline. Yes, because any other day of the week, a bouncy castle sounds way more fun than a bounce carpet. I don't care what you say. In fact, I'm wondering if this is the Swedish concept of Jantilagen playing out in practice because you say to your kid, I'm sorry, son, I know you wanted a castle, but you need to scale down your expectations. You need to be a little bit more modest. Here's a carpet instead. And if I was to tell you that the Swedish word shirt means meat, I guarantee it would give you no clues as to what this next word means. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, because the word tan shirt is the Swedish word for gums. But if you break it down into its constituent parts, once again, the literal translation is 
tooth meat. Mmm, sounds tasty, doesn't it? I mean, is this something that's destined for the top of my pizza or something that I accidentally get stuck in between my teeth? Either way, I have to admit that tooth meat does not sound pleasant and I'm not sure I want it anywhere near my mouth. Our next word is something that you will get very familiar with having at breakfast time here in Sweden. I mean, not that you would be able to work that out from the word. Yes, because if you would like to start your day the right way with a nice sandwich, the word you'll be reaching for in Swedish is smuggles, which literally translates to butter goose. Yeah, I'm not sure how they can claim this one is literal. I mean, I see the butter, but then I lose you when we get to the goose. Why is there a goose involved in my breakfast? If anything, it sounds like something you might expect to see on a new age Indian restaurant's menu where they're trying to be all chic and trendy. So instead of serving you a butter chicken, you get a butter goose with rice. Either way though, I'm not sure it's something I want to be presented with at eight o'clock in the morning with my coffee. And moving away from our dear friend, the butter goose, we arrive at the word that the Swedes created to try and describe a placenta. Yes, because I would ask you to remember that next time you are delivering your baby and they ask you to cut that tube between the placenta and the baby, what you're actually cutting is the link to the Mordekaka or the mother cake. I mean, is anyone else seeing intergalactic images of the Star Wars mothership flying through the skies in Revenge of the Sith, or is that just me? And maybe in some weird twisted parallel universe, you could say that in a way it is fighting intergalactic criminals, but you can also eat it because it's a cake. And I guess they're not wrong there either, because of course you can eat a placenta. I'm not sure if I'd want to, but it is possible. But that said, this is just another example of when the Swedes liberally apply the word cake for things that really don't deserve to be labeled as cakes. I mean, smuggish to anyone? It's not the concept itself that I have the trouble with, it's the fact that you call it a cake. And the same thing here, a mordekaka is not a cake. And sticking with the female body, the only place that I could really rightfully end this video today is Vortgården. Oh, give me strength. How am I supposed to describe this one? <laughs> so we've heard of a nipple, right, boys and girls? Well, the Vortgården is the bumpy bit of skin around the outside of one. And to avoid the currently very real risk of getting flagged for this video, I will not be showing any photos today. So if you would like to go and check that out for yourself, you can do that on your own time. But right now, it's the translation we want to get into. Yes, because if you literally translate the word Vortgården into English, you get Wart Garden. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how with just one phrase, you can put all of your sons and daughters off ever wanting to get hot under the collar with somebody from the other sex again. Yes, because somehow Sweden has succeeded with the impossible they have managed to make breasts unappealing. And with that, I'm sad to say that we've reached the end of another video, you guys. I really hope you've enjoyed this one today. If you think it was fun, drop me a like so I know that you want more content like this in the future. And if there's other Swedish words that you think are just too funny not to include in part two of this series, drop them down in the comments below. And who knows, maybe we'll be talking and chuckling about those next time. But until then, thank you as always for checking out one of my videos. I hope you've enjoyed this. Give me a subscribe if you've not done that already. Turn on the notification bell, then you'll be the first person to know as soon as there's a new wacky video on its way. Until that day comes, thanks again, and I'll see you guys very soon. Have a good day, and goodbye, guys.